Hi, I'm Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council with your weekly Anglican Perspective. I'm going to talk a little longer today because of the breaking news that came out that Archbishop Rowan Williams is resigning effective January 2013. He is going to Maudlin College uh, of Cambridge University to be a master professor. And uh, having visited there, I can tell you it's a beautiful and ancient place. And Rowan Williams' brilliant academic gifts will serve that institution well. During his tenure as leader, symbolic leader of the Anglican Communion, um, the American Anglican Council has differed sharply with him on matters of uh, the direction of the Anglican Communion and his handling of the crisis between those who believed in biblical standards for human sexuality, for the sanctity of marriage, uh, and for holiness of life and holy orders, and those principally in the Episcopal Church and the Anglican Church of Canada who did not. Uh, Anglican Communion teaching on this, that, that settled teaching of the Communion is that we need to follow the Bible on what it says about these things, and that was memorialized in a Lambeth Conference Resolution 1.10 in 1998. Well, the Episcopal Church has flaunted that. Um, there were three instances where Rowan Williams had some opportunity to do something about it, and really he didn't. Uh, number one was at a gathering of archbishops of the Anglican Communion in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, where the archbishops agreed that um, some discipline needed to be taken against the Episcopal Church. And basically, Rowan Williams uh, took matters into his own hands. He, uh, he didn't do what they asked him to do. And as a result, many of them decided not to come to future gatherings of the primates because what was the point if Rowan was simply going to take matters into his own hands? Secondly, at a gathering of Anglican leaders in Kingston, Jamaica, uh, bishops, clergy, and lay leaders, uh, Rowan Williams intervened in the debate about the Anglican Covenant, which was designed to hold us all together around some kind of a confession of faith and discipline. And his interventions were bewildering. They seemed to undermine the very Anglican Covenant he'd been championing and cast doubts about his own leadership behind it. Thirdly, in response to uh, this crisis, instead of giving more power to the archbishops, and existing instruments, he centralized power in himself and in something he called the Standing Committee of the Anglican Communion and the Anglican Communion Office. And that cast great doubt on the legitimacy uh, and respectability of the other instruments. So where do we go from here? I know a lot of you are wondering, well, who's the next Archbishop of Canterbury going to be? And will there be any difference? And I guess I'd really want to say to you that does it really matter? Because as uh, good, Bible-believing, Christ-centered, um, evangelistic, Great Commission Anglicans decided in gathering in Jerusalem in 2008 for the Global Anglican Futures Conference, uh, it doesn't really have to do with an archbishopric, with a see of Canterbury. We're grateful, we always will be, for the fact that archbishops of Canterbury blessed and sent out English missionaries to evangelize the rest of the world, and there will always be some affection for Canterbury for that. But as these Christians wrote in the statement in the preface to the Jerusalem Declaration, and I quote, while acknowledging the nature of Canterbury as an historic see, we do not accept that Anglican identity is determined necessarily through recognition by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Building on doctrinal foundations of Anglican identity, we hereby publish the Jerusalem Declaration as a basis for our fellowship. And really, this is what the Bible says in Colossians 1.17, where Paul writes, all things were created by him, that is Jesus, and for him. He, Jesus, is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And listen to this, and he is the head of the body, the church. That's the basis on which Anglican uh, reformers, Cranmer, L Latimer, and Ridley literally died at the stake for believing in the authority of Scripture, in the life of the believer, in the life of the church, uh, memorialized in things like the 39 Articles, the original councils of the church where bishops came together and talked about matters of faith and discipline together, uh, and, and in the creeds that we have. Um, 
I think of Bishop John Jewell, that great apologist for Anglicanism who wrote that uh, we need to return to that kind of conciliar form of government. But you know what? It's all based on Christ, the supremacy of Christ. Uh, in the life of the believer, in the life of the church, the supremacy of Christ as he's revealed in Scripture uh, and the supremacy of Scripture in our lives as we seek both as followers of Jesus and as Anglican followers of the way to live our lives individually and as a church as Jesus would.